Hi there. Uh, in this video, we're going to be going through some fixes um, for the unit test that we added in the previous four videos. Um, so we added the uh, front end functions for concatenate or concat or cat um, for each of the front ends. Um, and we added unit tests for these using hypothesis for the data generation. Um, but what we didn't do in all cases was correctly limit the data types to the data type supported by the framework. Um, this isn't like a um, this isn't a really bad problem because our helper function will actually automatically detect incompatible data types and automatically skip the test for us. But it just means that our hypothesis is a bit less efficient because when we're testing with 50 examples, we might waste some of those examples with data types that are never going to work. And hypothesis wastes resources searching for combinations that we already know aren't possible. So it's much better for us to outline this in the generation code rather than skipping it um, manually in the test body itself. Um, so this is just something that we should do to make the test a bit more efficient, basically. Um, and it's something that was missed uh, in the previous videos. Um, so, okay, so let's have a look then. So it's in the tests for front ends. Um, I'll go through in the order that we did them and just make sure that we've got them correct. It might not be the case for all functions, Perhaps some of them were done correctly. Um, and it's generally in this helper. This is another reason why refactoring will eventually be very good because if this is only one piece of code, we'll have one piece of code to change and not four. But for now, this is the way it is. So it's this array data types. In this case, it's a shared data type, but we should still limit the data types um, to available data types equals and then something else because right now um, right now we have available data types equals this but in reality um, we should be doing something a bit different which is so it needs to be a, a, a valid float data type for numpy because all of our value tests are done with numpy but we should also make sure that it's a valid float type for um, for Jax. Um, so we need the intersection because the union is, is both. So we need the intersection um, of this. Um, I'm actually just going to put this in a new line. So it's not too long. Oh, almost is too long. No, it is too long. <laughs> um, I guess this will, this can be like this. And now can just do this. The lint will refactor, reformat this for us anyway. Yeah, I don't know. Um, yeah, so that's the available data types. Actually, this is a bit cleaner, but we'll see what lint says. Yeah, whatever. Um, so this is something we'll need across the board. Although shared data types equals true is actually only necessary for JAX, I think, um, because it doesn't support broadcasting because the lax function is quite primitive. Um, so I think we can actually remove this flag from all the others as well. I would make all the changes first and then we can run all the tests. So yeah, I think we can do the same here. Although in this case, oh, in this case it's NumPy. So actually no, we don't need that um, at all. But we do want to put this as being not true because this should now support it and the default value is false, should be fine. Um, so now TensorFlow, um, TF concat, um, and it's here again. In this case, it's going to be IVTF. And then we just get rid of this line. I should have replaced it, sorry. Yep, okay. Uh, well, actually, maybe we should have tested as we went along, because if these are all wrong now, then I'll need to change them all. Um, so that was maybe not the wisest decision. And this one, sorry, yeah, this is doesn't need to be true. That was the whole point. And we need to import torch as well. But we don't need 
that in this case. We also don't need it in this case. It's just for jacks that we needed that. Yeah. So I think we can give it a try. Um, available data types of this intersection for TensorFlow, it's the intersection for Torch. Um, for NumPy, we don't need this because it's the same framework. It's the same set that we're intersecting with itself. And yeah, so let's give them a try. Let's go from top to bottom and see if these are all working. Uh, we still have 50 examples and we're now testing all back ends. So if all of these pass, then I think it's job done. But they don't. <sighs> okay, why do they not pass? Okay, so we actually can't sample from a set. Um, that's what it looks like, so that should be easy enough to fix. We can just turn it into a list. Was it a list or a tuple before? I can't remember. Probably a tuple actually, because it's a... Uh... So let's do that. Okay, that's promising. Okay, that's good. So, okay, so let's now, nothing to do there. So let's see if that passes. I think these run configs should have no, um, no backend specified, so. Oh no, yeah, we can see it because it's four tests and not one. Okay, NumPy concatenate is good. Um, oh no, not this, sorry. It's this. So now let's try uh, TensorFlow. And for some of these, actually, um, I think they might have no unsupported data types and therefore this is slightly redundant code as well, but it's definitely good practice to um, to kind of do this always so we're, we're not wasting resources. Although this has got a new problem. So maybe TensorFlow does not support. Maybe they do need to be shared. Cannot compute concat as the flow tensor. So I, I assume that with TensorFlow, let's take a look. Also, let's take a look at this. Of the same type, again. Non-empty tensors provided must be the same shape. So I think in all likelihood, Torch and TensorFlow do require the same type. And they don't do type promotion. Um, mm, the arguments. So there's no mention of type in the description, but it seems like maybe it's implied, which to be honest is fair behavior because you're kind of just adding two things together. To type promote, it's also not necessarily intuitive behavior. Um, so we'll, we'll go with the assumption that that's the problem and not that, the, not that it doesn't support the data type, but that it doesn't support a type promotion. And in that case, the only thing we need to do is put like shared I don't know why it's not auto-completing. Shared data type. Feels true. And again, I'll let lint fix the formatting. Okay, that's good. So now let's do the torch one again. I presume it's going to fail for the same reason because it does clearly say in Torch's 
um, dot string that type promotion isn't supported. Let's see, 50 is enough, for example, to catch such a problem. Hmm. Try again. I'm not convinced. Okay, well, I'll leave that. Well, let's try it. Um, for things that should. So float 16 and float 32 should be type promotable. Um, probably just do one actually, I don't think I need. Or float 32 and float 64, just in case it doesn't support float 16. Well, I think it does. It does, okay, fine. Probably they should change this to mean like promotable types, because that's a bit unclear. But anyway, um, it says one point. Yeah, it's the latest and that's what we've got. Okay, cool. Um, so that works. All good. So I think we can push for changes. Um, let's have a look. Again, I don't think we need comp test. Because that is just this and we don't want that. But we do want all of this. Um, so small bug fixes for um, data type generation for concatenation front end functions. Okay, um, cool, good to go. Um, so yeah, just a, a small bit video just as a follow on to some of the previous videos where there was a couple of things I missed and didn't do completely optimally. Um, yeah, so, so that's that. Um, I'm not sure what we will be doing in the next videos. I'll probably make them a bit further into the future, but I'll just keep finding front end functions to do and showing the process and, and eventually the code base will become more sophisticated and, and larger and there'll be more helper functions and so on and less kind of, um, less stuff going on in each function itself. Um, but yeah, but the general process will stay the same. We're using Hypothesis, we're trying to span all of the data and we're trying to get the function passing by um, making sure that the true function we're trying to replicate gives the same results as our replicated version. And this is essentially the process that we'll continue to do while we're doing all of the front ends and all of the functions. Um, okay, well that's it. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.